we're going to introduce the situations in which markets result in deadweight losses or a loss of total welfare. This lesson will build on previous lessons, specifically those in which we introduce the concepts of market equilibrium and the efficiency that results when a market is in equilibrium, and the video lesson on consumer and producer surplus. So if you haven't completed those lessons yet, I suggest you pause this video and go back and watch those now. In order to guide us today, we're going to be looking at the same market for beef that we looked at in our consumer and producer surplus video lesson. Notice in this graph that I've added an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity. This market has cleared and is in equilibrium at a price of $5 and at a quantity of 6 million pounds of beef. The first thing I want to do is to actually calculate or quantify the amount of consumer surplus and producer surplus in the market for beef when it is at equilibrium. To do that, we need to outline a couple areas. And the first area I'll outline is the area of consumer surplus. Recall from our earlier lesson that the total benefit enjoyed by consumers who paid a lower price than what they would have been willing and able to pay is the area below the demand curve and above the equilibrium price. Next I'll outline the area representing the producer surplus. Everything below the price and above the supply curve represents the additional benefit or the profits of the firms that were able to sell their beef at a price higher than the lowest price they would have been willing and able to sell it for. In order to determine the amount of total welfare in this market, all we need to do is find the areas of these two triangles and add them together. So this is a very simple calculation. The total welfare in a market equals the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus. Let's go ahead and determine what the area of the consumer and producer surplus is in this market. To do this, all we need to do is calculate the area of the two triangles here and add them together. We can see that the price at which the demand curve starts is nine dollars we can go six seven eight nine at a price of nine dollars consumers are willing to start buying beef at any price above nine dollars there will be zero demand for beef likewise at a price of one dollar producers are willing to start providing beef at any price below one dollar no producers will be willing and able to supply beef so to find the areas of consumer surplus and producer surplus all we need to do is find the areas of these triangles that is one half the base times the height so we can do 9 minus 5 times the base of 6 and divide that by 2. And that gives us 4 times 6 divided by 2. We get a total consumer surplus of $12 million. This value represents how much additional benefit consumers enjoy at a price of $5 in the market for beef. We can do a similar calculation to find the producer surplus for the suppliers of beef. We can find the area of the triangle outlined in purple. To do that, we do the base times the height, that would be 5 minus 1 times 6, that's the height, times the base, divide that by 2, and we get the same result. Total producer surplus is $12 million. We know that the total benefit enjoyed by consumers in the market for beef at a price of $5 is $12 million, and the same producer surplus is enjoyed by the suppliers of beef. So we get a total welfare representing the total extra happiness or well-being of producers and consumers in the market for beef of $24 million. Let's talk a little bit about allocative efficiency again. What makes the equilibrium price and quantity allocatively efficient? We can actually say that PE and QE are efficient because total welfare is maximized. As we will demonstrate in just a moment, there is no price quantity combination other than $5 and 6 million pounds that can increase the amount of total welfare in this market at the current levels of demand and supply. What I want to show now is a situation in which there is a price quantity combination other than the equilibrium and will prove that actually there will be a loss of total welfare, something that we call a deadweight loss whenever there is an outcome other than the equilibrium outcome in the market. Okay, I've cleaned up my graph here. What I want to do now is look at how the market will be affected at any price other than $5. And we'll calculate the areas of consumer and producer surplus to determine whether there is an increase or a decrease in total welfare. So let's assume that the price of beef is higher than $5. Let's go up to $7. Assume that producers decide that they want to charge a higher price for their beef and they want to sell more beef. So at the higher price of $7, they're going to increase their production of beef out to 
nine million pounds. We can see that the quantity supplied at a price of seven dollars will be greater. That's the law of supply. It tells us that at a higher price, producers will be willing and able to supply a greater quantity. So we have nine million pounds of beef produced. However, the higher price also means that consumers are going to be willing and able to buy less beef. And we can see right away that at the higher price, the quantity demanded for beef will fall. We can go over to our demand curve and down. We can see that the new quantity demanded, we'll call this QD, will be smaller at only three million pounds. The first thing to notice is that this is an inefficient level of output and price because the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. We have an excess, call this an excess supply, otherwise known as a surplus. And this is not the good kind of surplus. This is not consumer surplus or producer surplus. This is too much beef being produced. And we can also analyze this level of output by looking at the marginal benefit and marginal cost. At 9 million pounds of beef, the marginal cost is greater than the marginal benefit. The cost to society of the 9 millionth pound of beef is greater than what consumers are willing to pay for it. Too much beef is being produced. To further reinforce this, we can calculate the effect that this over allocation of resources towards beef will have on the total welfare in the market for beef by revisiting and calculating the new areas of consumer and producer surplus. So first we need to identify those areas. Consumer surplus once again is the area above the price now of seven dollars and below the demand curve. Clearly this is a much smaller area. Let's go ahead and calculate that now. We need to find the new area of consumer surplus. To do that we use the equation, the formula, one half base times height. So the height is now nine minus seven the base is 3 and divide that by 2 and we get an area of $3 million. That is 2 times 3 divided by 2 is $3 million. Our new area of consumer surplus is $3 million. So we're going to go over here and we're going to actually start to calculate the new total welfare. And that is consumer surplus plus producer surplus. Our consumer surplus is now $3 million down from 12. We need to find the area of producer surplus though. First, let's outline it in purple. You might be inclined to say, well, producers are obviously much better off. There's a much higher price and they're producing a much greater quantity. However, we cannot conclude that all producers are going to be better off because not all producers are going to be able to sell their beef at a price of $7. In fact, the quantity demanded is only three. So our area of producer surplus only goes out to three million and below $7. So whereas more beef will be produced, the area I am outlining in the dashed purple line is not beef that will be sold, so it is not included in the area of producer surplus. Our producer surplus is now the area outlined in the dark purple line. We can calculate that area by dividing it into two smaller areas and finding the areas of those. So this is three, so this rectangle here has an area of seven minus three, times 3, which is 12 million. And the smaller triangle down here has an area of 3 minus 1 times 3 divided by 2, which is 2 times 3 divided by 2 is 3 million. So our total producer surplus, you can find the producer surplus here, is 12 million plus 3 million, 15 million dollars. So yes, producers are better off some producers are better off. However, there are 6 million pounds of unsold beef in this market, so not all producers are better off. Only those who are able to sell their beef at the higher price of $7. The excess supply, the surplus beef that this creates, will go unsold, and the producers of that beef will end up with unsold product on their hands. So the total producer surplus is 15 million, giving us a total welfare over here of 3 plus 15, 18 million dollars. How does the total welfare at the higher price of $7 compare to the total welfare at the equilibrium price of $5? Well, we can compare it. 18 million compared to 24 million. Is society as a whole better off or worse off? To answer that question, we must determine the amount of dead weight loss. And that is the loss of total welfare when a market is producing at any level other than its equilibrium. In this case, the deadweight loss, or the loss of welfare resulting from, we can call this the welfare loss, 
this market producing at a higher price and a greater quantity is 24 million minus 18 million which is six million dollars let's look at our graph and see if we can find an area representing the loss of welfare resulting from this market being in a disequilibrium so what we need to look for is the area of total welfare that no longer exists in this market and that's pretty easy to see the area I'm outlining in blue used to be included in our area of total welfare however now this area has been lost due to the disequilibrium that has resulted in the market. We can calculate that area just to prove that that equals $6 million. We have a height of this triangle of 7 minus 3. That's 7 minus 3. And we have a base of this triangle of 3 to 6. That's 6 minus 3, that's 3. And we can divide that by 2 to find the area of our triangle. So our deadweight loss equals 7 minus 3. That's 4 times 3 divided by 2, which is $6 million. There we have it, $6 million is our deadweight loss. This market is less efficient by the amount of six million dollars because of the higher price. So what does this have to do with things we will study in the class? In future units we're going to look at situations in which markets are not allocatively efficient. Situations in which the government has intervened in a market to try to help either producers or consumers. For example through the implementation of price controls or taxes on the production or consumption of goods or subsidies for producers and consumers. And what we can conclude is that anytime a market is not producing at its equilibrium point, there is a loss of total welfare. This is what we call the dead weight loss and the market is said to be inefficient. So in this lesson, we have explained a situation in which a market has gone from being efficient and at which total welfare is maximized. In other words, the total benefits of consumers and producers in the market is maximized to a situation in which the market becomes inefficient and there is a loss of total welfare. Anytime a market produces at a price quantity combination other than equilibrium, there will be a dead weight loss in that market. In the future, we're going to learn all about scenarios in which markets are inefficient and we'll be able to observe identify and calculate the area of deadweight loss resulting from a market producing at a level other than its equilibrium price and quantity. Here we go.